I'm going to show you how to turn a $15 antique mall purchase into thousand plus dollars back. Like Some of it is. Only when it is. Yeah. Grab this one. That one's Civil War for sure. Grab this one. That yeah. one's looks Civil War too. Ooh, grab this one. Grab that one. I don't know if that one's any good, but I'm going to look it up. Here, hold this for just a second. Just aim it down here. Okay. National Military Home, Virginia. Boy, somebody doesn't. Old Veterans Home, Day uh, Dayton. That's, oh my, that's a good bet. 30 bucks, no one. No, it was a new. Look at this. Oh, it's at an attraction. Check that out. Oh, this is a cool photo. Oh, yeah, that's pretty wild. Tom Mix. Comics. Look at that. What's going on? Oh, Alaska. Oh, it's a whole stack of them. It does have the shorts. And it's the only one that does. I think I'll get that one. Even though it's five dollars. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some items I purchased at an antique mall. My son had to return something. I went along with him in case he had an issue. It's a place I've dealt with in the past. They actually have our tax ID on file there too, so we looked around. Now I did find something pretty amazing there for very, very cheap money. I have the receipts to back it up, which will show you the receipt. I'll also show you some close-ups on how to turn this $15 purchase right here into an easy thousand bucks back for us so here is everything that I bought I'm actually going to show you the receipt here just so you can see how much I spent I don't spend tax either I do have a tax ID number that I turn in so I don't pay tax so I spent 93 bucks on this stack plus uh, four other things actually I bought a Rick and Morty plush and I'm actually uh, gave that to the wife here uh, that was eight bucks it was brand new NOS with the tag it's a $35 item so right off the bat I was happy with that now, I've got a trashed out book, Ladies Magazine, I spent 15 on. Uh, I've got a little sticker I spent 50 cents on. I've got another magazine I spent a dollar. A photo I spent three. I've got $60 in the stereo views. Uh, I've got a program, which I'll show you too, for $5. And then I have a single charm that I spent 50 cents on. So all told, 93 bucks into this stack here, minus the plush, which I already took out again. That was 8 bucks. Now, we'll show you some close-ups here just to give you some better ideas here. Now, these all, again, I've got 60 bucks into all of these. They were in little sleeves, so I'm not going to rush to take them out. But these are Native Americans. These sorts of things I usually get 35 or 40 bucks for. Maybe not on eBay, but I, I still get that price range for these sorts of things. So these are the types of things that I look for. Um, these are small. These are early. These could date back some of these to the 1860s and 70s. So these are excellent primo items. Um, this actually has the location it was taken in. Um, it's Waverly, New York, as you can see over here on the side. Some of these types of images can go for hundreds of dollars, believe it or not. I'm going to roll up punches there. This one was priced at three, as most of them were. Um, a parade, this one should do extremely well also. You can kind of date these also and kind of decide on what kind of parade they were from the dated information down there. May not look like a whole bunch, but most of these I'll get 30 to 40 bucks a piece for. Civil War Battle. This is from a later set after the war, but it's still a very well collected one. Again, these were just a couple of bucks. I think I paid two bucks for this one here. Uh, any of these, even though it's a painting, still can go for 30 or 40 bucks. Another Civil War one here, same basic principle. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about any of these. Uh, here is another interesting one. This is Mount Washington, the summit of Mount Washington in 1870 to 71. This is winter. 
It's got a lot of information. Whenever I find these, these are like tourist advertising items. And oh, I didn't pay eight bucks for it. I think I got two bucks a piece, as I said, in all of these, or two or three dollars. Again, stuff like this, I could get 150 bucks for some of these. Just have to price it on out and dig into the information. Here's another interesting one out in the Southwest. I believe this one is a California image. Another nice early one right here. Uh, this is the courthouse in Rochester, New York. A nice early 1870s or so. Even with the corner damage, I'll still sell. The image is what's important. Not necessarily these. It's still usable. It would still fit in. Now this one's very interesting because this is the National Military Home. This is a veteran's home. I believe this is in Sandusky, Ohio. Now people may have missed that. This is a fairly scarce card. It actually has Civil War veterans based on the date this was made showed on there in uniforms. They've got GAR uniforms, Grand Army of the Republic on. So for two bucks, this card might get me 75 bucks. Another one. This is another earlier one. Uh, this again, old veterans at dinner, uh, and this is Soldiers Home, Dayton, Ohio. So this might be the same one, or it could be a different uh, actual Soldiers Home, because there were several in Ohio. Again, this one they're dressed in GAR, Grand Army of the Republic uniforms on. So this one as well could be worth 75 bucks. These are all real pictures too, mind you. Now this one as well is a soldier home. Now again, if you don't dig into these and look, dig around the back, on the back it actually says soldier's home on the back and says where it's at. So again, real photo, it has soldiers in uniforms on the front. I'm still gonna put 75 bucks on this one also. Now here's an interesting earlier train trussle bridge. Uh, it's got some good information on it. I'll be able to track this down without a doubt. It's got uh, the maker and the whole works. This one should do me fairly well also. So I'll just have to figure out the location. Bridges and things like that are pretty easy to track down, especially of this size. Now here's a couple of real photo, real picture postcards, RPPC. And this is a very well-known, let me back up just a little bit there. Very well-known Western actor with the guns, all the outfit on. Again, two bucks a piece on these also. And this is a Verlag, it's a German one. I've sold some similar to this in the 75 to $125 range. So if for a dollar or two, I usually try and pick up these actor cards like this one here. Excellent, excellent item here. Unused, the whole works. Another one, Gloria Swanson, very nice one as well. Another German one, nothing on the back. Excellent early image, 1930s, 40s. Gonna sell, might sit for a little while, but pretty much right off the bat, we're gonna make all of our money back from just a few things here. Now here's a very nice early, 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 early one. Watkins, New York, and it's the Glens there. This would date to the late 1860s, probably 1870s era. It does have a little problem. It has a piece that's been divvied out of there. I can repair that, so I'm not too worried about that. Either way, some of these cards should get me at least 75 bucks a piece. Again, I got 92, what was it, 93 bucks and everything here. Now this one here we're going to talk about in just a minute here. Let me show you everything else before we dig into it here. Now this one here doesn't look like much. Let's actually just zoom in for another second here. Now this was 50 whole cents. Now this is from FLIR. This is a non-sports trading card sticker. These usually sell for around 15 to 25 bucks. Came out, I think, in 1970 by FLIR. Uh, it's like a non-sports trading card. There was just a bunch of stickers called Sticky Feet. I very rarely run into anything of this line. I instantly knew what it was. So this again, this little 50 cent purchase here might get me 25 bucks back. So excellent, excellent item there as well. Let's get this one out of here too. I'm gonna zoom in a little farther here so you can see this. Now, it might be a little hard to see, but this is a little pin. It's an enamel pin. It's an excellent, excellent condition. Uh, it's for Columbus, Ohio. It probably needs a little polishing to it. I spent 50 cents on this. This would date to around 1890 through around 1910, 1920 at the very latest. This is a charm. Columbus has a huge amount of collectors. It's the state capital. You've got Hocking Hills. Something like this I routinely sell for $17.50 or more all of the time. So this piece here should get me at least that 50 cents again. I just picked a few items. I could have spent all day there just yanking out stuff to turn on and resell. 
antique models I can flip and make a ton of money on every single time I go to one. Every single time. I've never lost money ever on an antique mall purchase. Ever, 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 ever. So let's back up again and show you something else. Now they had a whole bunch of these all for five bucks a piece. And this is the program on the receipt that I spent five bucks on. Now this one has a peace symbol here, which happens to be a swastika. And that is why I bought this here. The other ones didn't have that. This has better graphics. This is a menu from the Alaskan line. Uh, SS Alameda is the name of the ship. I believe that's a picture of it on the back. Early one, uh, 1930. This should get me 25 to 30 bucks without any problem whatsoever because of the graphics, the western scenery, the whole works. The line I don't believe exists or anything else like that anymore. So all around, it's a very, very nice item. I may even go back or have my son go back in and grab all the rest of these uh, wallies there. Um, because again, at five bucks a pop for another 20 of these, I think I could make you know at least $15 profit from every one of the rest of these. I'm not greedy. I don't have to have everything. So I didn't grab them. I grabbed this one because it looked very nice. I didn't want to spend a ton of time there either. Now this magazine is the magazine I spent a dollar on in there. Um, it has some issues. I can fix some of this. I'm actually going to repair this one, I think. I may do a video of it. We'll fill in the gap. We'll iron this out. I'll reinforce it. We'll unfold any of the paper here. This is a very interesting magazine. The corners are even still there. So though it has a little bit of issues, this is from 1932, talking about Japan wanting to conquer Asia. Now, it talks a lot about China. There are some conflicts between China and Japan in the same time frame. You got Uncle Sam down on the bottom. You've got caricatures of all of them. There's the uh, British one there. So it's all types of people that are caricatured on this one here. It even has a library stamp, which I could care less. For a dollar, this one here, because of the China tie-in, could honestly get me 75 bucks or better, even in this condition. Again, I am going to fix that. I will touch it up with some matching color, probably fill in the wording and the whole work, so I'll back it, as I said, and sell it that way. This, again, maybe 75 bucks, just because of the China topic. No other reason whatsoever. And again, if you didn't know China was possibly the best part of this, you're missing out the most important part of this actual piece here. Now let me go to the best piece I got, which is this book right here. And this book here should net us at least $1,000. And again, let me pull the receipt back out just so you can see it. Um, Ladies Magazine, I spent 15 bucks on it. This is the Ladies Magazine from 1773. That is the actual date that this was printed and made. Now, it's a pretty much trashed out book. It's missing the back cover. It may be missing a few pages. The spine's pretty much shot and gone. It's separated into different sections, and most people would assume that it doesn't carry much value. Obviously, it's old, 1700s, the paper's right, it's real, it's legit, it's from 1773. That is when this was printed. Now, being a ladies' magazine from this time frame, you got to know how magazines were done, done back in those days. It's not really a book that we're looking at here. It was bound at the end of the year. So basically, if you dig through here, what you're going to find are separate editions of this magazine. So you've got February 1773 issue of the Ladies Magazine. Many of these may not have had a cover leaf or a cover to them. They may have been shipped out just like this. At the end of the year, if you had the money, you would take this in and have it bound as a complete year so you could read it to your heart's content without damaging it at all. Now, 15 bucks again, you may still assume it's old, but what are you really going to get out of a book like this? Well, no fooling, no exaggeration. I could easily get well over a thousand bucks back out of this for some very good, important reasons. This is the secret to making money from places like this. I buy junk stuff, and the junk stuff is usually overlooked for many reasons. The condition is usually the biggest one. Now, what these have, which is something you probably will never see, and I have personally never seen, are fold-out uh, sheet music. So there is sheet music in this book from 1773, words, music, and the whole works. And there's more than just one. There's nine or ten, I think, we counted in here. In fact, let's pull out you a couple other ones to give you an idea. So there's a lot of these. Now, sheet music complete. This is complete. It's the complete thing with lyrics and the whole words for it, all the song lyrics. 
It's got the whole thing. It's just repeated. I'm going to be listing these for 175 bucks a piece. And as I said, there's nine or better in this book. There's some war content in here as well. Here's another very large one that folds out. This one's even better than the rest of them because it's even larger. Some of them have music on both sides of the paper as well. I don't want to mess this one up. They were uh, tipped in like this, so that being cut out is not a problem. This one does have it on both sides. It's a complete, complete piece of sheet music from 1773 the time of the revolution. So I'm going to break this book down because it's not complete, it's missing. Don't even think all the sections are in here. Each one of the sheet musics, as I said, and again, there's nine of them. Maybe there was 10, but I know there's at least nine, is going to be listed for 175. I should get at least 100 bucks for each one of those nine, so that's 900 bucks coming back. On top of that, once I've taken out the sheet music, I'm going to be selling each month of these that I have in the Colonial Revolutionary War section for 5750 as 1773 Revolutionary War era magazines. And they almost always sell really well, really quickly because they are original. You'll have reenactors and things, people that want um, a display piece or something like that that will use these. This is another interesting one. These are all in English too, which is something even better. Again, the condition scared off everybody. This thing apparently was in their booth for months and months and months and months and months on end. Being a sheet music person to start off with, I instantly knew that this is worth some good money. Sheet music is extremely scarce from any of these. For two guitars, this is even guitar music from 1773. This $15 purchase will be split up into at least 18 different lots on eBay, all from the 1773. Excellent item, bona fide. No way anybody can, can contest the age, the, the, the sheet music itself. So if you know what to look for, trashed out items, things that other people would mostly discard, things that people price extremely cheap. Again, this is a book that most people would have cut out the sheet music. I almost never find books from this age in any condition that have the tipped in items, maps, uh, layouts, sheet music, any of that stuff's almost always cut out of the book. These will be the only sheet musics up on eBay as well from the 18th century, the minute I list them. The oldest sheet music on eBay right now is around 1820 that I could find. So when you add up all the stuff I got, the magazines, the photos, the stereo views, the pins, 93 bucks into them, 93 bucks into everything you see here, I could conceivably get close to $2,000 from it just because of this $15 book purchase here. Books I always break up. Anything like this, if there's engravings, I'll take the engravings out. If the book wasn't trash like this, it may be a different story. But at this point, there's just not much left of the book condition-wise. I can clean this up, scrape a little of this off, and market them as individual monthly magazines as well as selling the sheet music separately, as I said. This is the secret. This is the trick. You've got to know at least something about the stuff you're buying to be able to figure out what's the good stuff, what's the bad stuff. This is how I do it. This is how you can make this sort of money from just a junk stack of stuff like this. Again, to most people, this isn't going to seem like a whole bunch of money. To me, it was 93 bucks. Return out of it's going to be almost 2000 at the rate it's looking at now. Well, there you have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Crunchy and light. Mmm, thanks, Dad.
someday I'll really be eating Jiffy Pop in outer space? I wouldn't go back there without it. Look for Jiffy Pop's special Goonies Glowing Cap Offer. See package for details. <laughs>